Let's get the read now from economics professor Brian Benberg, independent women's forums, Sabrina Schaefer, and Red Alert Politics editor Ron Meyer. All right, Ron, to you on this and this plant. Uh, it's a victory tour in a way for this president meeting with the CEO of Boeing right now that he has had their back. The jobs are still here. He's going to continue looking after them, and uh, they have much to look forward to. Is that a fair argument? I think that's a fair argument, but we might see more, right? So you brought up a couple points just there. One is how he's going to navigate uh, the trade with the Middle East, right? And so allowing Boeing to continue selling their products over there. The other question is what Trump will do for the XM Bank, right? If he's going to appoint another board, uh, board member, allow them to have this favorable loan status, then Boeing is the number one benefactory uh, from the XM Bank. And so that's something that he could be discussing today. And that could be something that he's announcing later today. And that's, that's what we're following. And Trump, you know, he has been on a victory tour, and I think rightfully so. The question is, will the press cover it? Yeah, well, there is that. You know, Sabrina, one of the smartest things I think Iran did after securing this nuclear deal and starting to get a lot of that unfrozen money in their hot little hands is uh, buy all of these uh, Dreamliner planes in advance, uh, knowing full well that any U.S. president down the road that want to alter that, well, well, there's a, a big risk to those orders and those jobs that come with them, right? That's right. You know, Neil, I mean, I think that there's so much that the president needs to address here because it goes obviously well beyond Boeing. One of the main things when I think about this, this speech today is sort of the, the potential trade war and the questions about protectionism. Um, well, on one hand, you know, a lot of us conservatives are sort of enthusiastic about the idea of this president cutting taxes and moving in sort of a more of a you know, free market libertarian approach to economics. There's this other piece that's sort of weighing a lot of us down. It's very concerning. And so I think that this is a, the setting where we're going to want to hear a little bit more about that, about that border yeah. tax. And what does this mean? I mean, this is, in effect, a regressive tax for, for a lot of Americans. You know, Brian, it, it's, you're the finance chair with the King's College Manhattan, and so th let me get that part of your brain working here. Not that it needs much working, but that's what a lot of free marketeers have problems with this president. They like the fact that he's going to cut taxes, cut regulations, but whether it's a border tax thing, whether it's a force to keep jobs in America thing, that it leads to protectionism that, that is not good uh, for the country longer term. What do you say to that? Well, I think a lot of people are excited about the policies that the president has proposed that can grow jobs, that can get the economy growing. But that does, can put does people that back other in. stuff offset it? Yeah, well, that's, I think that's the issue is they look at his good policies and say, great, this looks good for the future. They look at the trade stuff. They look at the tariffs. They look at the border tax. and They say that's going to undercut exactly what he's right. trying to accomplish with taxes, with regulatory cuts. We don't want to get stuck in the middle again. Why put your foot on the gas and your other foot on the brake? Put your foot on the gas and let's go. Let's not mess around of things that could throw off a potential strong recovery, uh, strong job gains for Americans. You know, Ron, when you look at this and look at how the markets today, notwithstanding, um, have performed, uh, it's built on a lot of optimism that we're going to get big tax cuts, that we're going to see, you know, more jobs in this country. Um, in other words, priced almost for perfection. Uh, normally, that's a worrisome sign. I'll, I'm, I'm going to touch on that with my buddy Charles Payne in a moment, but normally that could be a worrisome sign. Are you worried? Well, the PE for the market, I think, is, is something to be concerned about as well. And so, yes, there's a lot of optimism built on Trump's proposals, but it's also built on this, right? And we're talking about trade, is that Congress supports his tax policies and his regulation policies, but they may stop his trade policies. Right. And so that's probably mm -hmm. what the market's reacting to, is that you're going to get what's seen as positive free market forces, and you won't get the negative, or there will have to be some sort of compromise. And there is a cost-benefit to trade policies, right? So free market people and libertarians argue that there's only basically benefits to free trade, and obviously people who have backed Trump and backed his trade policies would argue that there's some cost to the American worker. And so there are cost benefits on both sides that obviously what people who support uh, market economics would say is that there's going to be more benefits long term with freer trade. But there's a debate to be had there, needless to say. And so that's where I think Trump's going to be marching. Uh, but the markets are reacting to the fact that the Republican Congress said that they were going to get these things done. But I haven't really seen them moving much on these yeah, economic they, policies. They we're seeing some good, hearings. I agree with that, Ron. They do talk a good game, but it, it, it eventually you have to deliver. But Sabrina, um, in the middle of this, you, you get a lot of people are talking about the press conference uh, from yesterday to today. It's all anyone can, can chat about. And then you have someone like John McCain who comes out today to say the administration's in obvious disarray. Now, there's bad blood between he and the president. That's well known. Mm -hmm. Lindsey Graham, bad blood there, well known. So when they say something, maybe accept it with a grain of salt. But 
are there problems there that, that, that this president might be, maybe has issues within the ranks? You know, I'm not in the White House, so I really don't know. And I'll, I do know that there seems to be sort of a tremendous amount of scrutiny. You know, if I go onto any of the major um, newspaper websites or political websites, all I see are headlines that start with the word Trump and end with chaos. And it yeah. sort of seems a little <laughs> silly at some point. Well, you got to get off MSNBC. I know. Just, like gotta, there must yeah. be other things happening here other than sort of a discussion of you know, who's fighting with who. Um, I think the thing is, that, and this is where all of us should be very excited, for, for years now, now, the press hasn't taken an interest in what's happening inside the White House. They've just sort of, you know, let it go in one ear and out the other. And I True. want there to be more scrutiny. I want them to be saying, what's going on in there and how is it going to affect the average American family? So whether or not you like Trump or not, whether or not you like the media or not, this is all very good for the long-term sort of health of the country, in my view. You know, Brian, uh, quickly, one thing I have seen, uh, uh, and we, we devote the good and the bad. We look at all the controversial parts, the Flynn uh, firing and the timing of that, who knew what and when. We get into some of the, the failures, whether the vetting uh, executive order got off too soon and was, uh, you know, sloppily executed. But we'll also point out the, the, the kind of developments like this where he's guaranteeing and protecting jobs and all that. So we figure it for 24 hour news channel, we have time to get into all of that. Uh, so I think he is right when he says that media generally focuses on the negative with him um, and, and disproportionately so. What do you think? Yeah, well, it, that may be true, actually. And the point is, he, he doesn't need to focus on that so much. The point isn't to get credit for the good things you do. It's to mm -hmm. get good things done. And what I'd really like to see him do is say, look, I don't care what anybody says. We're going to get tax reform done because that's going to help people. We're going to get regulatory reform done because it's going to help people. Focus on what you get done. Let the headlines fall where they may. But when you do good things, People are going to go back to work. They're going to be happy about it. At the end of the day, that's going to be good for him. It's going to be good for the country. Yeah. And so that's where I think his focus right. needs to All be. Right, guys, well, I like, that, thank like you. that coal legislation yesterday, right? Well, yeah, there's a lot going on here. Guys, uh, thank you very, very much.